And it's a good thing that Shanda Rigby has that kind of star power because she has a shorthanded lineup tonight, Suzanne. Six players not available for the Trojans, eight available tonight for Troy as this game is now underway. Yeah, and again, I think that's sort of going to be the storyline, not just here in San Marcos, Texas, but I think across the country we're going to continue to see that. Good start for the Trojans. Janiya Sanderfer has the game's first basket. Troy won its Sunbelt opener last week against Coastal Carolina, but they were unable to play this past Saturday against Appalachia State because of COVID issues with the Mountaineers program. And again, Troy has now won six straight games after starting the year four and five. But that slow start, Suzanne, has some context. Five losses, three against the Power Five. Yeah, preseason was a real, I want to say, a struggle for the Bobcats. Um, you know, injuries, just different things, but really a tough schedule. And they're, uh, I think, have, have sort of figured that out and in getting into conference play. Starting five tonight for Coach Rigby. So again, Troy's won six straight and included in that win streak an impressive win at Mississippi State back in December the 18th. And tonight, Troy looking to make it seven in a row. Worth noting this team won 11 straight last year going into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they, they've played a schedule. I think both these teams have been well-tested in the pre-conference play, and uh, Troy especially. Coach Rigby really wanted to test some of these new transfer, put them in some situations, and uh, sort of see how they would respond. Starting five tonight for Texas State as the two teams have exchanged turnovers and a three-pointer out front for Sandifer. Her second basket, Trojans a 5-4 lead. The Bobcats again coming off a split of their first two Sunbelt games, a win in Monroe, a loss in Lafayette. But like the Trojans, they weren't at full strength last week either, down four players to include a couple of key players in John and Johnson and Ja'Kayla Bowie. Yeah, and again, <clears throat> I think it's going to be a reoccurring theme, Brian, is, is the COVID is just, uh, the protocols is just going to affect college basketball in numerous ways and we'll talk more about it throughout the broadcast but you know the bobcats and the trojans as well as the rest of the conference is going to have to be able to adjust film was karanga the basket there for the trojans a good start to conference play for texas state's top two players talked about this in the open of the broadcast a steal at half court easy basket for karanga and this will lead to a timeout for head coach zinnery antoine we're early in this game. The Temple already kind of fast-paced here. Troy's style of play, and they lead it early, 9-6, 7-39 to go here in the first quarter. Back after this from Strand Arena with the Trojans on top by three. We, the people of Texas State University, United to create a more perfect future. We're the people who make this community more than a school. It's a place built on collaboration. We are people with great ideas and ambitions. With talent and dedication. We're turning ideas into actions and actions into achievements. We empower and inspire each other. We spark innovations that change lives. Our ingenuity creates opportunities. We are the people of Texas State University. We are family. And together, we'll do more great things than you can imagine. Join the mobile fan club that sends you Texas State Athletics news, scores, and highlights as they happen. Simply text TXST to 83200. Breaking news, instant scores, information, and special offers will be sent to you via text alert. Visit TXST.com slash text to customize the sports alerts you want to receive. Join the Texas State Mobile Fan Club by texting TXST to 83200 now. I love that we're close to Austin and San Antonio. The observatory, great stargazing. Altec Library, our professors are amazing. Our round theater building. 
people watching on the quad. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Our campus is so beautiful. I love our flexible class schedules. Saving turtles at the turtle crossing. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. The new labs at Star Park. I love that we can express ourselves. Grabbing lunch at Jones. So again, an early timeout for Zinnery Antoine, less than three minutes into the game. Trojans, four or five shooting from the floor. Suzanne, I know it's early in the game now, so let's establish the keys for both teams in the Sunbelt Conference matchup. You've sort of already seen some of them, you know, for Troy, they want to control the tempo. They're going to continue just like they did here to create turnovers and to speed the game up, and they also really want to hit the glass. That's sort of their trademark and they want to defend with a purpose. That means they want to, just like they did there, get turnovers. Texas State on the flip side, they've got to take care of the basketball. They've got to block them out, only lim limit the Trojans to one shot. And on offense, if they can move the ball, swing from side to side, they're going to end up getting some easy shots against the Trojans. So Troy on top early here, 9-6. to six. Bobcats playing for an upset of the reigning conference champs. We were talking about this before the Quick timeout from Coach Antoine again. Asia Hood, Kennedy Taylor, he played well last week. The two combined to score about 34 points a game. And so it goes without saying that the Bobcats need those two to play well as Taylor turns it over, but they need help as well. Yeah, they do. They're going to have to have at least a third score. You know, in, in a perfect world as a coach, you have a couple perimeter scores and you have an interior score. And so if the big three from Texas State can all – produced tonight, they can definitely give Troy a run for their money. Three minutes gone by, Trojans on top by three. A reminder about what these two are playing for here tonight. Trojans playing to keep a winning streak alive. They've won six straight, and the Bobcats last beat the Trojans in January of 2018. Here we are now in 2022. Yeah, and I really like the pace right now for Texas State. They're making Troy have to defend in the half court. They're moving the ball side to side. And again, they're getting some great looks at the basket. And you see there, Thompson, sorry, uh, Lauren Thompson, yes, draws that foul at the bucket and is going to get herself to the free throw line. Lauren Thompson, junior out of Arlington, preseason 13 All Sunbelt Conference. Good job attacking the offensive glass there by Thompson. Player averaging about nine points. Five rebounds a game at the foul line where she shot very well a season ago, ranks in the top 10 in the Sunbelt Conference that category this year, and of course, misses the first. You know, <clears throat> we speak things into existence, Brand, and sometimes, depending on which team you're for, it, it may not be a positive thing. Bobcats struggled somewhat from the line in their first two Sunbelt games, 64% shooting for the stripe, and Thompson goes 0 for 2. Corner three, that's off target for Tia Johnson to get a very good three-point threat. Leads the conference in three-pointers made and shoots just under 40%. This team loves to shoot from the outside. Yeah, they really do because, again, you know, if you, anyone has followed Everybody Coach Rigby and the Troy Trojans over the last decade, they really want to get the ball down the court quickly. They want to take that first open shot, which a lot of times will be a three like the last possession and then they're going to crash the boards and really try to get a second attempt. Offensive foul, Jada Reed. Turnover, Texas State. That is the Bobcats' fifth already of the game. They're shooting 60% for the floor, but they keep turning it over. Back to Troy in three-point shooting. They don't shoot at a great clip, 27%. But they are second of the conference in three-point attempts, more than 21 a game. Yeah, and again, again, the style a little bit with Troy is, we mentioned quick shots. A lot of them could be three-point attempts. Then they're really going to do a great job on the offensive glass, go get the basketball, and then make it. And so that's where you see the, the number of possessions they're going to have really is going to be high in a basketball in a 40-minute in a game. But it's not just Troy possessions. There will be a lot for the opponent as well, typically high-scoring games that oh. involve the Trojans off the miss. Hood has the rebound for Texas State. Uh, yeah, definitely. Their scores, if you look across the board, are going to be very high scoring because of the number of possessions each team is going to get at the offensive end of the bucket. These two, the last time they met, was in the quarterfinals of last year's Sunbelt Tournament as Hood drills a jumper. It was an NBA final score, 103-90. <laughs> to 90. 
Troy won that game, albeit in overtime, but that gives you an idea how high the point total can get. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, both these teams have players that can score, and, uh, you know, another unnecessary turnover there by the Bobcats. Hood took a, an extra step there, but both these teams have players ha that have the skill to put up some big numbers, and so you, we could see a very high-scoring game tonight. Nearly halfway through this first quarter. Trojans on the road this year, just one and five, but that one win in Starkville against Mississippi State. Offensive rebound and put back. Jemiah Hollings, little use player, just her fourth game of the season. But again, Troy playing shorthanded down six players here tonight. Yeah, and again, you know, Coach Rigby and her staff are, you know, trying to find that recipe and and trying to mix and, and, and mingle and get some folks out there that can play. And they're probably playing, like most teams at this point in the year, playing some different positions than they've been trained to play. And so you just got to make the best of it and get out there and compete. Nice block shot there from Julia Dunlap. Trojans, very good defensive playmakers on this team. Dunlap tied for the conference lead in block shots as Taylor steps out of bounds. Yet another unforced error. You know, Troy is going to create turnovers with steals and the pressure, but you can't, because of that, you can't commit your own mistakes. Yeah, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. You know, there's in, in the game of basketball, you're going to have some turnovers that are just going to happen uh, because of the way the ball bounces, you know, a variety of reasons. The ones you don't want to do are what, are what I call self-inflicted turnovers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bobcats have had a few of those already in this first quarter. They've got to try to eliminate or lower those to stay competitive in this game. And again, right now, we've got a really good ball game, 11 to 8, with the Trojans ahead. And you saw the number, Troy already plus 7 in turnover margin. This was an area of concern for Zinnery Antoine coming into the game as Jasmine Robinson hits for the Trojans. A five-point Troy lead. What a story for Jasmine Robinson. One of two players, Dunlap the other playing with torn ACLs. Robinson suffered the injury in this building in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year against Texas A&M. San Marcos, of course, was a regional site. And both she and Dunlap have been able to rehab properly to get back out there in a short amount of recovery time from such a devastating injury. Yeah, definitely. And Coach Ruby really commented today how proud she is of their work ethic and the grind to get ready to be able to play this season. And you just saw that last possession by the Trojans, leg at speed and ability to get to the rim and uh, had a really easy left-hand layup. Over the back calling is Jada Reed. And for Texas State, their second foul of the quarter. Amber Leggett, we talked about her at the very beginning of the broadcast. As you look at Kennedy Taylor and what she's done in her career, look at that, Suzanne. About five assists a game among active players in the top ten of the country. And she's zeroing in on 500 career assists, 12th currently among active players in the nation. Man, if, if you want to go and, and have somebody on your team and you're at the local rec, you want to get her on your team because she's going to set you up and let you get some points. And so uh, she does a great job of facilitating offense. Leggett scores again. We were just talking about her. A player that is fourth in the conference in scoring, and she's coming off the bench for Shanda Rigby. Yeah, and, uh, for, and for Troy, that's, um, it's just, uh, <laughs> the word bench is just sort of a, a loose term because so many kids play, it doesn't matter who starts, they're all going to be out there for a bit, at least half the game. Good looking shot for the outside from Taylor. Four point Trojan lead. Under three to go in the first quarter. Reed, a good block there against Leggett. And you saw the note, Leggett is the reigning conference play of the year from the Southland, a first-year tr transfer out of Sam Houston State. With Troy losing a star player like Alexis Dye to the transfer portal themselves, she's now in Tennessee. What a big get leg it was of, over the offseason. Oh, absolutely. And, and Coach Rickaby couldn't be more excited about her being in a Trojan uniform. You know, there she missed an easy little bunny. But she is one that really has a high motor and is competitive and just energetic and she loves the energy she brings each and every day to the Trojan program. Here's Jonna Johnson, transfer herself at a Texas Tech. Ball rips away by Tia Johnson. The other way, races inside and lays it in. 
And Texas State's got to, again, Troy is trying to get a little bit of separation here from the Bobcats. It's a six-point game. Texas State's got to come down, get in their stuff, take some time. And, you know, sure as I say that, John Johnson puts up a three and actually has it, I mean, touch the bottom of the net and pop back out. And then on the rebound, Thompson's shot is blocked. Leggett thought she was setting a screen, wasn't ready for the ball. Trojans with a turnover. In transition, Thompson the other way. And for the Bobcats, their first point off a Trojan turnover tonight. Troy in that department, it's early I know, but we're gonna watch this stat. Points off turnovers, the advantage there, nine to two. Yeah, and, and again, that's gonna be a key is the points off of turnovers for Troy and then the offensive rebound. Uh, that's where they live and, and uh, get a lot of their points on offense. Coming up on the final minute, here the first quarter, four point Trojan lead. Dunlap hits the long two. Jalea Dunlap, senior out of Columbia, South Carolina. Third year transfer out of Ole Miss. Six point Trojan lead. Dunlap so far. Active defensively, that her first basket of the game. Here is Standifer for the Bobcats. Rebound Lauren Thompson puts it back up and in. Good first quarter for Lauren Thompson. Really good job getting that 50-50 ball and uh, giving Texas State an easy bucket there. Six points so far for Thompson. Johnson, short of the three, defended well by Standifer. Leggett on the offensive rebound, can't finish. A miss by Dunlap, and the Bobcats get a stop. Yeah, the Bobcats really missed an, an arrow right there. A couple, two easy bunnies at the bucket missed by the Trojans, and they got out of there without relent relenting any points. Now we're about... 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. See if Texas State can make it a little bit closer ball game. Kick ball by Leggett. Bobcats can hold for the final shot here. Late substitutions each team. Don't see much of Nicole left for the Bobcats. It's Shanda Rigby. Getting vocal from the sidelines for Troy. Taylor gets it back in the corner. Bobcats looking for a quality final possession of the quarter. Thompson, or Taylor rather, long three, rebound, fought for, loose, and time runs out. A competitive first quarter in San Marcos, the reigning Sunbelt champs, looking for a three-peat this year on top of the Bobcats. 21-17 at the end of one. Second quarter coming up from San Marcos. Time last year in Huntsville, Texas, playing for Sam Houston State, Southland Conference Player of the Year. And now here she is at Troy. Big impact for the Trojans, ranks in the top five in both points and rebounds per game with the Sun Belt. And athleticism runs in the family. Her older brother, Jordan, played college football at Clemson and later a draft pick in the NFL back in 2017 of the New York Jets. Yeah, definitely so. And again, the... We'll get a little discuss later on in the broadcast, but boy, the transfers, the impact they're having across the country for teams is just crazy. Tough angle bank there for Felmus Karanga, the junior out of Nakuru, Kenya. Preseason first team, all Sunbelt Conference. Big impact player for Troy. Taylor the turnover. And for the Bobcats, that is their ninth of the game already. Troy in transition, Jada Walton. Another transfer out of Texas Tech, the bucket, and the Trojans an eight-point lead, their largest of the game. And again, it's quick. You know, you make a mistake, you 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 know, give up an easy ball there at the other end, and about three seconds, it's going to be going through the hoop if you don't get back in transition defense. Should note in that tournament game, the Bobcats and Trojans played in a year ago. Troy dominant in the first half. Led by 17 at the break as left scores inside. Texas State battled back in that game, took a brief lead of the fourth quarter. Troy had to kind of rally itself to tie the game and force overtime. Yeah, and, and that's going to happen with the style of play with Troy, with the number of possessions you have. And when we talked with Coach Rigby today, that's happened earlier for them. When they were at Jackson State, they were down 21 and one by 19. You're going to see big swings just because of the number of possessions. Denasia Hood checking back into the game. 
talk about the series history between the Trojans and the Bobcats. It's been very competitive over the years. However, Troy has won three in a row. And there's that tournament game in Pensacola this past March, won by Troy. Bobcats got some big games from Kennedy Taylor, 28 in the game. Jaquila Bowie had a big night against Troy as well. Was named to the all-tournament team as a result of her performance. And again, Texas State was on the verge of knocking out Troy, a team that took AM to the brink, the SEC champion, in the first round of the NCAA tournament just a week later. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think credit for Texas State's success against Troy is going to be is Coach Antoine. I think she sort of found that recipe of how you have to attack them, but the Bobcats have to be able to do that consistently to be able to stay in this game. And there is Coach Antoine, your number 11 at Texas State. The two coaches in this game, two of the longer tenured coaches in the Sun Belt. Yeah, and both of them, you know, I know Coach Antoine probably better than I know personally Coach Rigby, but I, I've spoken with her many times, as you and I have, and both of them, I think, have a great perspective on women's basketball, and they're very big in more developing more than just the basketball part for these young ladies. They're about them for life after basketball. Walton to miss, Leggett, offensive rebound, slapped away by Thompson, and a hands-up play, knocked it off the leg of Leggett. Trojans with their third turnover, and the Bobcats get it back. And we talked to Coach Rigby about her time at Troy. She was so impressed with the support she has gotten from administration, from the university itself. I mean, she took over a program that had won two games the year prior, and now she's turned Troy into a perennial Sunbelt Championship caliber team. Yeah, and again, she's done a phenomenal job. Again, this is her, she's been there a decade, taking them to great heights. They've been successful not only in at the conference level, but they're now getting into the national tournament on a consistent basis. And so now they're trying to take that next step and to win a tournament game. And I think that's what she's trying to get this team prepared for. Karanga, short, last touch by Thompson stays with Troy. And you look at this Trojan roster, a number of players already had their degrees. They could have made the decision to move on. The players that came in transferring could have transferred somewhere else. Collectively, this group wanted to be a part of a potential three-peat program, winning a third straight Sunbelt championship. There's a lot of buy-in from the players on this roster as well. Yeah, it is, and that, that's a key. I mean, that's the same thing Coach Antoine's doing with the Bobcats is what Coach Rigby's doing on the flip side. Both of these programs, you've got to have buy-in. You can always construct your teams different ways. You know, Coach Rigby really likes to use the transfer portal or, or transfers from junior college is her foundation. And there's a lot of ways to peel an onion, so there's not just one way, but both of these coaches have found different niches to help their team be successful. Bobcats have cut the lead down to four, under seven to go in the quarter, and a foul called against Texas State. With the Trojans on top by four, talked about those transfers. See the list of them here from pre players from previous Division I programs. Five first-year D1 transfers, some of them from the Power 5 level. Yeah, and it definitely, it can definitely impact your team immediately. And that's what the portal does. It brings in experience. It brings in Division I folks who are used to playing at this level, and it's an immediate impact. Um, you know, you look the same thing that Coach Antoine did with Jonna Johnson. It fit a niche. She needed some extra help at the point guard handling the ball and taking some of that pressure off of Kennedy Taylor. So what does she do? Goes in the portal and, and sort of picks her from Texas Tech. And so I think that's going to be a theme we're going to see from now on in women's basketball and on the men's side. Both free throws. Good there for Jasmine Robinson. Six-point Trojan lead. Here we are in the second quarter. Troy playing for six straight win. Bobcats looking for their first win over the Trojans in nearly four calendar years. Yeah, and again, that just shows the dominance in this last four-year span that Troy has had. They have been a perennial power in the Sunbelt Conference. Denasia Hood, good second quarter, 10 points in the game. Leggett, offensive rebound, and now a battle. How about Kennedy Taylor? 
five foot three, giving up eight inches and who knows how many pounds to leg it, battling for the basketball there. Yeah, and again, Coach Antoine, anytime you talk with her, you and I know, Brent, she sings the praises of Candy Taylor. You know, she was finally, finally, and I'll use some other words I don't want to on the air that Coach Antoine used, finally got some recognition in the preseason uh, all-conference position, but she is that glue. She is the motor that makes this Bobcat team run. Yeah, Coach Antoine commenting that she believes, and yes, she's biased, that Kennedy Taylor is, in fact, the best point guard in the Sun Belt Conference, and right now the numbers are there to back it up. Six assists per game for Taylor. Had nine this past Saturday against Louisiana on top of scoring 20, a player who can get her own and get others involved. Yeah, and even the game before that, you know, Kennedy doesn't always look to score first. She has that point guard mentality. She had eight assists in the game at Monroe, and so she is just dishing out, as you would say, Brant Dimes, left and right. And again, it's getting a little chippy out there. You know, we've yep. had some people hitting the floor, both teams, and, uh, you know, nothing malicious by any stretch, but just it's getting to be chippy, and these teams are battling. This is conference basketball, Suzanne, right? I know. And again, Coach Antoine's even getting the action there. She got uh, showed her hands catching the ball, and I think she may give it back to him. There we go. Of course, she played herself at Colorado State. Her teammate, one of her teammates, Becky Hammond, just made some headlines. Becky Hammond, an assistant with the San Antonio Spurs, that in of itself breaking a barrier, but has now left the Spurs to become the head coach, a record deal of the Las Vegas Aces in the WNBA. Yeah, and I, I, you just don't have words to the things that Becky Hammond and that you see that's happening, whether it's in on fo in the football staffs or whether it's basketball, the things that are happening for women being able to advance. Um, it's just unheard of, and, you know, me personally, I think it's just awesome. Coming up at the halfway point of the quarter, four-point Trojan lead, Karanga traveled. Fourth Trojan turnover. Bobcats have committed 12 of the Rome, but they're shooting well. Texas State, 55% shooting, but again, Troy's a volume team, Suzanne. They've taken 11 more shots than the Bobcats have. And we mentioned Karanga, the reigning Sun Belt Newcomer of the Year. And on the topic of breaking barriers, how about that? First ever female born from Kenya to play Division I basketball. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, I had some players from Kenya when I was coaching at Abilene Christian when I first got into the business and um, great student athletes and I, I know her family back home has to be super proud of her. Of course at the time ACU a Division II program now the Wildcats playing Division I in the WAC. Bobcats playing for the lead now. They haven't led since it was 4-2. Last bucket a made three by Taylor. She's got 10. Hood She's got a dozen, and the Bobcats have the lead. Texas State in the midst of a 7-0 run. Yeah, they've been doing a great job on the offensive end, showing patience, moving the ball. Again, big three last possession by Taylor, and then again got the ball to Hood. And there's Karanga. Again, what an impact she's had for the Trojans since transferring in from Tyler Junior College. This year in the Sun Belt, top 10 points, shooting, rebounding, blocks and steals yeah she can do it all again a great a great player and a really good pickup for coach Rigby and the Trojans a year ago Reed against Leggett short on the turnaround Trojans get a stop they haven't gotten many in the second quarter in the corner open look at a three spins out for Sandifer Bobcats get a stop of their own Taylor no look pass and Reed wasn't ready for it. The other way, Johnson. Taylor backs off, easy bucket, three point Trojan lead. Yeah, and again, those type of miscues you may are haunting the Bobcats. They get ahead by one point or two points and then lo and behold, here comes Troy right back. They've got their foot on the gas pedal and they're gonna keep flying. Bowie quiet so far tonight. Works it back to Hood. Lines up a three. Rebound off to Karanga. Trojans have seized momentum back. Three minutes to go in the half. Leading by three. Karanga. 
off the glass, scores again, 10 of the game for Felmus Karanga. Yeah, she is such a tough player. She has great length, really good touch in the interior around the, bu the bucket, and then she is a just a beast on the boards. I mean, she can just, on both ends, defensively and offensively, really uh, takes care of things. You do wonder about fatigue for Troy, playing with only eight players tonight, and we have still yet to hit the under five timeout. Yeah, I think both teams are getting a little gassed right now, going up and down uh, without a, a time to blow a little bit. Shot clock winding down. Taylor throws it away. A steal for Johnson. Troy the other way. Leggett, offensive rebound, and another second chance bucket for the Trojans. And that will lead to a timeout for Texas State. The Bobcats went on a 7-0 run. Troy has answered with an 8-0 run of their own. The reigning champs playing for his seven-game win streak, lead by seven, late in the second in San Marcos. Texans love Texas and its natural beauty. Now, there's a lot of land in Texas, but only a small amount, 4.7%, is protected natural space. Meanwhile, more Texans arrive every day. Our population is predicted to increase 52% over the next 30 years. So how can we balance what's good for nature with what's good for all of us? Info from surveys, trailhead cameras, and drone footage reveals how people actually use parks, rivers, and protected places. Combined with geographic data like park size, location, and environment, patterns emerge. Geographer Jason Julian explains. The San Marcos River provides a lot of benefits and, and we want to use those, but we can protect the ecosystem by creating public access points so we can control and manage where the public's using them and then protect sensitive areas. You could be attending all Texas State home games. Ask your parents about signing up for the Bobcat Kids Club. For this low price, you get a football season ticket, free admission to all other sports, Kids Club t-shirt and membership card, an autographed picture from Boco, and so much more. Sign up at txtbobcast.com or call 512-245-2272. When you get home, sign up for the Bobcats Kids Club. Suzanne talked about this earlier. COVID protocols have changed in the Sunbelt Conference as the Omicron variant is really amped things up. The virus is running like wildfire right now. And with that, the conference has changed its guidelines. You see there the minimum required to play seven student athletes and one full-time coach. Before, if games had to be canceled, they would be a forfeiture. No longer the case. It will go as a no contest. And if teams can't play 80% of their games, they will be seated at the bottom of the tournament seating. Looking ahead to Pensacola, but Suzanne, you and I talked about it. So many games are being canceled now. In the women's side alone in the Sun Belt, 12 so far to include future games this Saturday. Can that 80% number hold up, or will the conference have to change that again? Yeah, I think they'll have to evaluate. I mean, um, you know, when we talk to both coaches, Brant, you know, about the COVID is the only thing that we know is happening is change, you know, and you have to be able to adapt. And so I think the conferences are doing the best they can to predict and to set things up to make it as efficient and fair to every program as they can, but you just can't predict the future. 
Looking at corner three. Bowie knocks it down. Cuts a Trojan lead down to four. Ends Troy's 8-0 run. And there you see the list. The games last week, the games tonight. One, ours is one of only two being played in the conference. And already two games canceled this Saturday in Sunbelt women's basketball. Yeah, again, like I said, it's it's just sort of takes the words away, the COVID, and you, you'd think from a year ago, Brant, really great finish there, and the bucket going to have a chance for N1, Corunga. Um, you know, a year ago, there wasn't the vaccinations available there on the, all those type of things, and you were doing tests weekly, and now many of the student athletes aren't being tested weekly because they've been vaccinated, and you have people on the team that are, and vaccinated and some that aren't and so there's all this different rules and things that the kids are having to deal with as well as the coaches and so um, it's definitely a challenging time uh, to be a student athlete and to be a coach. Karanga good on the free throw big first half so far 13 points talked about that win over Mississippi State earlier for Troy Karanga 23 against the Bulldogs nine rebounds and that win in Starkville. 100 minutes to go in the half. Troy's led throughout a majority of the half. On top right now by seven. Hood, the pull up. Hits again. Deja Hood, 14 points. Very strong first half for the senior out of San Antonio. Shot the other way, won't go for Johnson. Bobcats with the bucket here can make it a one possession game as we, as we get closer to halftime. Yeah, and again, I think you know, both teams are still sort of feeling each other out a little bit. You have some new pieces that haven't been in this rivalry before uh, for Texas State, trying to adjust to the speed of the game, how Troy plays, and then, you know, Troy trying to adjust without half their teams. You know, yeah. so I think there'll be some interesting adjustments at halftime. And that foul, the first of the quarter, called against Troy. And with that, the shot clock turned off. Bobcats again can hold for the final shot here. Hood, in and out, wouldn't go down. One of the few misses of the half for Denasia Hood. Final seconds ticking away. Robinson into the corner. Walton three, may have been partially blocked by Kennedy Taylor, and we have hit halftime in San Marcos. Running champs have their hands full right now against Texas State. But again, that last number, which reared its ugly head of the first half as well, has been a problem for the Bobcats as of late, turnovers. Yeah, and again, things that you don't know if you're just looking at the numbers, the, tur the turnovers have been in, uh, increased, but also they've had some personnel issues with COVID protocols and different players too, and that contributes to those turnovers. Meanwhile, Denasia Hood picking up where she left off, hits the shot to start the third quarter. Now 16 of the game for Denasia Hood. Should know she's scored 20 or more 15 times in her career, three times so far this season. Three-point game. Shot won't go for Robinson. Bobcats, again, winning the battle on the boards against the top rebounding team of the country so far. Yeah, they've done a really good job of, of hitting the Troy player and then going and pursuing the basketball. Johnson three-pointer bounces off the rim a couple of times. Wouldn't get the shooter's roll. Robinson the other way. Good ball movement. Johnson, that's a three for the Trojans. A clap of the hands by Tia Johnson as she drills her first three of the game. Yeah, and again, Texas State, Troy is capable of scoring in bunches. You know, we've seen that historically from. You can look at the stats. Stats don't lie, as they say. And so Texas State... Has, has had some trouble with droughts. So they've got to continue to be patient like they hear on offense, get the ball into Thompson, but then she's got to be able to make those shots. 13th highest scoring team of the country. Has 43 on the board so far. Open look at a three. Robinson right down the shoot for Jasmine Robinson. Before that shot was one of 26 from three this season. That's a confidence building shot for Robinson as Zinner Antoine calls for time. Nine-point Trojan lead early in the third quarter, 46-37. The champs have built a nine-point lead over the Bobcats. Club.
Club who sends you Texas State Athletics news, scores, and highlights as they happen. Simply text TXST to 83200. Breaking news, instant scores, information, and special offers will be sent to you via text alert. Visit TXST.com slash texts to customize the sports alerts you want to receive. Join the Texas State Mobile Fan Club by texting TXST at 83200 now. We still stand strong, always will, shining from the hill, eternally committed to truth and the flow of knowledge, turning dreams into action, action into life, life into achievement. In the face of change and challenge, we are fierce, we inspire, we innovate, we become. If you have a favorite social media platform, Texas State Athletics is on it. From Twitter to Facebook, Instagram to YouTube, and now Texas State Athletics coaches, student athletes, and spirit groups are there. Connect with the Bobcast by searching at TX State Bobcast on your favorite social media channel and enjoy the unique content that only the Texas State Bobcats can deliver. To see a list of all Texas State Athletics personalities on social media, visit TXST.com and search social accounts. Texas State Athletics social media stay connected we the people of texas you know suzanne we spoke earlier about how shanda rigby took over a program that had gone two and 25 the lowest scoring team of the country before she took over troy has since been one of the top offensive teams in the nation in her 10 seasons as head coach and look at the effect she has had on troy women's basketball from a non-factor in the Sun Belt to perhaps the premier program of the conference. Yeah, she's done a great job. Again, 10th year there. She's picked a style of play, and it fits her personality, and it fits um, the type of student athletes she recruits, and that's a, that's a recipe for success. I mean, you have to figure out as a head coach what you want to be and how you want to play, and then you've got to go get players who fit that, that scheme, and she has definitely done that. A big key to the success has been retention on the staff. All three were full-time assistants seven years or more, including Jennifer Graff, who has been with Rigby the entire time. Yeah, she does a great job with her staff. Her staff is veteran. You know, Jennifer Graff was the head coach at Northwestern State in the Southland Conference when I was coaching. And so she's got experience. She's got folks she can trust. And, and that helps you be really good when you don't have to teach your staff as well as your players. Bobcats, another turnover, they're 17th. Troy's at back-to-back threes, and it builds a nine-point lead. Nine-point advantage for the Trojans, their largest of the game, now 11. Dunlap scores inside, 48-37, Troy on top. That was a great shot by Dunlap. Taylor Kennedy, sorry, Kennedy Taylor dropped into help and tried to swipe that ball away and just missed it. Here's Bowie out to John Johnson. That's a shot for the outside for Johnson. Former Texas Tech Red Raider, John Johnson, first points of the night. Ends Troy's run at eight straight, eight unanswered points. Johnson, the answer three, Tia Johnson for the Trojans has a response back out to 11 point Trojan lead. Yeah, and it's good to see that John hit that three and a no, we talked about Denasia Hood had some shooting struggles early in the season that the Bobcats are coming around on the offensive end. Taylor, the miss, rebound to Sanderfer. One of two players for Troy that is in her fifth year of the program, Robinson. One made three all season coming in, two in this third quarter, 14 point Trojan lead. Well, and you knew she was capable. I mean, she's coming off a great year last year. She was a preseason all conference selection. And it was just a matter of time. Sort of like we see with Denasia Hood in the last few games. That sort of got the offense that spark rolling. Yeah, the shooting numbers are down for Robinson this year, but a player coming off a devastating knee injury in last year's NCAA tournament. The drop off was to be expected, but maybe finding her shot again here tonight. Robinson now has 10, and coming off a, an 11 point game in the opener, the Sunbelt played last week in the Winter Coastal Carolina. Yeah, and, you know, Brant, you know, we've talked about it, you know, the season 
is is uh, is not a sprint. Sorry, it's not a marathon. Which way is it, Brand? <laughs> it's not a sprint. You had That's it right it. the first time. It, it's a marathon, and so basically, Coach Rigby and Coach Antoine want these players. We don't want to be playing our best basketball right now in January. You want to be playing your best basketball in March. You see, where you slipped up was that people typically say it is a marathon, yeah. not a sprint. Marathon's the first thing you say. Yeah, you, you <laughs> got it right there, Brant. It's been a long day today, and, you know, my wordsmith has ran out. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> Dixon, good on the free throw. Had a good opening game in conference yep. play herself against ULM last week. 11-point Trojan lead coming up on six to go in the third. Here's Dunlap. Bobcats on the switch. Force a turnover. Taylor the other way. Bowie driving inside. Robinson falls down. The whistle comes, and Ja'Kayla Bowie will be shooting two free throws here for Texas State. Yeah, did a great job, a great drive there by Bowie. Uh, the defender for Troy got inside that restricted circle, which made it an easy call there. You look, and Robinson had those heels inside the inside the restricted area, and that automatically was a block and gets Bowie some free throws. Again, Ja'Kayla Bowie, very strong Sun Belt Tournament, one of those games against Troy this past March. 42 points in the two games in Pensacola. Shot 70% from the floor. Talk about Texas State's big three, but Bowie just outside that group as she hits both free throws. Yeah, and again, going into this season, you know, I think the expectations are, are still high for her to be a prolific scorer for the Bobcats. She has the ability. You know, she was out last week and didn't go on the road trip, so she's just getting herself back into the groove. Leg at the miss. Got the rebound inside of Johnson, lays it in. And there's Troy's offense going to work. They got a team that thrives on the offensive glass. Second chance points. Lead back out to double figures. Hood. Shot was contested. Here come the Trojans. Ball knocked away by Taylor. Stays with Troy. You almost got involved in the game again, Brant. But yeah, great job there by Taylor, tipping the ball to bounds, let the defense get set for the Bobcats and uh, making the Troy Trojans actually run some offense, not getting things out of transition. That's right, it was a men's Troy Texas State game we covered last week in which my laptop suffered an injury. <laughs> Player crashing to the media table this time last week. Robinson throws it inside. Last touch by Texas State, stays with Troy. Happy to report the laptop has since recovered. Okay, that's good. Available for tonight's game. Johnson. Oh, nice move inside. Got around Jada Reed. How about Tia Johnson? Senior out of Phoenix City, Alabama. Puts Troy on top by 13. And then another Texas State turnover. Bobcats minus 11 in margin tonight. Good ball movement. Three-pointer Johnson that time off the iron. Troy collects its 13th offensive rebound of the game. And again, Texas State did a really nice, solid job in the first half on rebounding. They've got to put two halves together to stay competitive with this Troy team. Read the rebound off the miss from Leggett. Bob Gass trying to close the gap. Bowie the drive inside, swatted away by Jamia Hollings. And a timeout on the floor. Troy led by five at halftime. The lead is ballooned to 13. Trojans playing for a 2 0 start to Sunbelt play. Hold the lead over the Bobcats. 58 45 from Strand Arena.
our roots, we draw strength and inspiration. We come from many different places, to the green hills of Texas. We arrive with a passion to achieve and a desire to do more. We bring our dreams and ambitions to a campus rich with opportunity. We put in the work every day, because winning takes preparation, teamwork, and leadership. We understand that giving our best performance means digging deep, and winning a race doesn't mean we stop running. Our sweetest victories are in developing new technologies, solving problems, honing our talents, and sharing what we learn. The big game we're preparing for is life. The whole world is our stage. At Texas State University, winning is making our tomorrow better than today. Texas State's today's your hood. Been a star for the Bobcats this year. Ranks in the top ten of the Sun Belt in five different categories. And Suzanne so far tonight, she's been a star again. 16 points, 8 of 13 shooting, 5 rebounds. She's kind of carried the Bobcats so far. Yeah, and she definitely can do that. She has a great skill set. She, she creates a lot of problems for Troy on defense because she can score at all three levels, you know. Coach Antoine says, I think Hood's back in her groove now that conference play has started, and she real, was really impressed last weekend with her play and that she was really hungry to get back on the court because she was out for a couple weeks with uh, an injury. Bob Gastney more than Hood, though, tonight to claw out of this 13-point deficit. Turnovers have been a huge issue for Texas State tonight. Dixon a good look, but Troy has the rebound. Trojans the other way. Leggett has the pass slapped away by Standifer. Robinson and Standifer fighting for the ball. And on the possession arrow, Troy will keep it with 4-10 to go in the third. Again, this is one of only two Sunbelt women's games tonight as uh, COVID is canceled for the other four games. And Coastal Carolina, a 72-69 win over Georgia Southern. The shot to clears now 11 and 2 this season. Yeah, no, that was a highly contested game. It was a two point lead by Georgia Southern at half, and then Coastal was able at home to get the victory. Smooth shot there from Jemiah Hollins. 15 point lead, largest tonight for Troy. Bowie can't hit the three. And Walton has the rebound for the Trojans. You kind of get the feeling that Troy is pulling away now. Bobcats need a run. There's a defensive stop. Yeah, and again, we talked earlier about this. Because of the pace of play, you're not really ever out of it when you're playing against Troy because there's going to be enough possessions to overcome a 13-point lead. Hood, another basket. 18 of the game for Hood. 13-point Trojan lead. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. Reigning champs, preseason favorites in the Sunbelt Conference of Troy Trojans. Leggett pushes down Hood and scores. And I thought I thought Denasia Hood did a really good job of moving her feet and getting in front of Leggett, but there just wasn't enough contact there uh, for the official to, to award her with the charge. Taylor off in the three. Here comes Troy up by 15. Trojans started the year four and five. They've since won six straight momentum, carrying over to San Marcos and Leggett. Coming off her fifth double-double of the season. Will now go to the free throw line. Yeah, Leggett is active. She has a high motor, and uh, she's a tough one. I mean, um, she she's not a big, daunting player uh, physically, but her activity level and how competitive how her competitiveness really comes out. Talk about making an immediate impact. In her Trojan debut this year, scored 32. Also had a 22-point game against Wake Forest. I got a player named Southland Player of the Year, Sam Houston State, last year, transferring into Troy. So last year, Sam Houston State in the Southland Conference. This year, the Bearcats in the WAC. Next year, they'll be in Conference USA. I'm telling you, the, the way that the conferences are realigning and, and schools are moving around, um, you got to have more than a, a map to keep up with it. And there's talk of the four new Sunbelt members joining as soon as next year. Southern Miss, 
Marshall, Old Dominion, and James Madison. And all those schools are really going to bring some more quality basketball programs for both the men and the women's side. Hollings a steal. Leads to a Troy basket. This is what the team does. They make defensive plays. You look at what they do in blocking shots, stealing the basketball, top ten nationally in both categories. No team gives up more points in the Sun Belt than Troy, but it goes back to all those possessions created. But Troy fuels its offense with these defensive plays. You, na you nailed the... Uh Hit the nail on the head there, Brant. Another one got you, Suzanne. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> yeah. Again, they just, they're going to key off of your mistakes. You know, you turn it over, you get loose with the basketball, they're going to make you pay. You don't block out, they're going to make you pay. And um, they, they really key off your miscues. And now going to the free throw line, Jemiah Hollings. This is another way Troy fuels its scoring. Getting to the free throw line. No team of the country has attempted more free throws than Shannon Rigby's Troy Trojans. Yeah, and again, they're going to get a lot of those opportunities because of the offensive rebounds. You know, someone was out of position because they didn't block out the person. They're going to turn around and what I call they're going to hack them and uh, give, them a, give them an opportunity to get to the free throw line. Troy has now outscored Texas State in this third quarter, 27-12. It was a five-point game at the half. 20-point Troy lead now. And again, this is one of the comments that Coach Rigby made about this team that she's really enjoyed is they have that drive. They have that internal clock that tells them they've got to step up and, and change gears um, because they all want to win a championship. Tia Johnson hits another one. Long two for Johnson. 16 to the game now. 22-point Trojan lead. Tia Johnson, 10 points in the third quarter alone. That's a great quarter. And, again, Troy has just really put their foot on the gas pedal. And hopefully, if you're a Bobcat fan, that big three right there by Jonna Johnson will get the Bobcats rolling and, and uh, get back in the ballgame. We saw at the half, Texas State was out shooting Troy. But in this third quarter, even with that miss, the Trojans... 11 of 16 shooting in the quarter. So a team that creates possessions when they hit shots at that kind of rate, no chance of beating them. No, if they're, if they're hitting at that rate and the number of attempts they're getting, like you said, if you do the math, it's going to be uh, it'd be really tough to beat them. 69 to 50 coming up with the final minute of the third quarter. Bobcats playing for the upset. Troy playing for its seventh straight win. 19-point lead. Here is Sierra Dixon. Shot blocked by Karanga. Loose ball saved by Dixon. Taylor for the baseline. Got her own rebound. Johnson off of that three. And Dunlap has the rebound for Troy. Trojans the other way in transition. Filmus Karanga got behind the defense. 71-50 Trojans on top. Man, Karunga ran the floor, was a rim runner from end to end, and great find uh, by Sandifer to give her that easy layup. Coming into the week, Felmuz Karunga, 19th nationally in double-doubles this year. Sandifer, contested three. Good for Gabby Sandifer, first basket tonight. Dunlap. Boy, Troy worked so quickly on top by 20 again. Yeah, they really push the ball back at you. The post really sprint the floor and get down. And again, to end the third quarter, a last shot there and just doesn't fall for the Bobcats. A dominant third quarter for the reigning champion Trojans. They outscore the Bobcats 33 to 18. They lead it by 20. Going into the fourth from San Marcos, we're back with more. We're far and away, the best team of the Sun Belt won the regular season championship, never got to play even a tournament game as the remainder of the tournament at that point had been canceled because of COVID. Of course, no team of the country played after that point in time. And she said that really stuck with her. And the championship they won last year was so rewarding because of the opportunity lost from the year prior. Yeah, you could, you could just tell the emotion in her voice that it still is a real gut punch. Um, not for her 
necessarily, but for those players uh, that didn't get to have that experience. So last year getting to come to Strahan and play Texas A&M in the first round um, was an indes- indescribable feeling for her. Can we talk about that for a second, Suzanne, as Lauren Thompson cuts the lead down to 18 here for Troy? Again, COVID last year impacted basketball around the country. Scheduling was impacted quite a bit. Teams were focused more on regional play um, around the country, and the NCAA tournament, both the men and women, was centralized. The men's tournament happened in the greater Indianapolis area, and for the women, it was in the greater San Antonio area. So this arena, Strand Arena in San Marcos, was used as a site for first-round games. What an opportunity for this university, for this women's basketball program to be put on the national map, getting to host last year's NCAA tournament. It was. I mean, you know, everybody in the entire nation, when they had the games here, when you're watching that first round, got to see Texas State, got to see this grand facility with all the renovations that have taken place. And um, it's just an opportunity that you – you would dream of because other than that you have to bid for it and it's a a lot more difficult to get to be a host in a typical year which seems like so long ago now it's bigger market cities that will get to host those sites if not that then a large name university Uh, the texas state university in san marcus would never have that opportunity but it came about last year and again was a great chance to put this school in this program in the national spotlight as Troy's now on top 74-55. Woman had gone by here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, tough call for Lauren Thompson a minute ago. You know, it looked like it possibly could have been a charge down there on the low block, but it didn't go her way. Bobcats, meanwhile, commit their 22nd turnover. Leggett hits a three for Troy, 14 for Leggett, first three of the game. Not a player who shoots a lot from the outside, but does shoot well when she takes them. 22-point Troy lead. Trojans again pulling away here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and and right now, you know, Texas State is still playing hard and competing. They're just not able to score at the volume that the Trojans are, and that's that's what happens. You know, they, they're used to playing at this pace. They're, they're used to scoring at this pace, and Texas State isn't able to match that. Look at that from Hollings. The hustle there and the rebound almost led to a basket. Johnson the other way. A three in the corner. Answer three good for Texas State. That's Sierra Dixon on the three. Back down to a 19-point Troy Lee. But again, the stat that just pops off the page. Turnovers. This was something Zenery Antoine talked about as Troy easily scores inside. Dunlap the basket there. She said after last week, and all the mistakes made against ULM and Louisiana had to be cleaned up in a game like this tonight. They haven't, and as a result, Troy has built a 21-point lead. 79-58, Trojans on top, on the way perhaps to their seventh straight win. Shanda Rigby and the Trojans in control in San Marcos. We, the people of Texas State University, United to create a more perfect future. We're the people who make this community more than a school. It's a place built on collaboration. We are people with great ideas and ambitions. With talent and dedication. We're turning ideas into actions and actions into achievements. We empower and inspire each other. We spark innovations that change lives. Our ingenuity creates opportunities. We are the people of Texas State University. We are family. And together, we'll do more great things than you can imagine. From our roots, we draw strength and inspiration. We come from many different places, to the green hills of Texas. We arrive with a passion to achieve and a desire to do more. We bring our dreams and ambitions to a campus rich with opportunity. 
to put in the work every day. Because winning takes preparation, teamwork, and leadership. We understand that giving our best performance means digging deep. And winning a race doesn't mean we stop running. Our sweetest victories are in developing new technologies, solving problems, honing our talents, and sharing what we learn. The big game we're preparing for is life. The whole world is our stage. At Texas State University, winning is making our tomorrow better than today. Texas State in a tough spot right now, down 21, and they won't have a chance at redemption on Saturday. Their game against South Alabama, one of the 12 games in the conference that has been canceled. So the Bobcats won't play again until next week, their Georgia road trip against the Eagles and Panthers. That is part of a three-game road swing for Texas State. Their next home game after tonight, not until January 22nd, against a very good UTA team. Yeah, UTA has been playing really well. Um, Coach Wright has, has got them turned around. They had some uh, nice wins in the non-conference, and so I think they're a team that is definitely on the rise in the league. Talked about this earlier. Star Jacobs, the reigning Sunbelt Player of the Week for the Mavericks, two-time honoree this season. Out of the timeout, 21 point. Trojan lead cut down to 19. Good inbounds play. Leads to a layup for Ja'Kayla Bowie. Yeah, really nice execution by Texas State out of the timeout. And again, now they've got to start putting some stops together and then converting on the offensive end. Troy in the second half, 65% shooting and they're not cooling off. Johnson drills another three, 21 of the game for Tia Johnson and leads all scores. Yeah, she has been filling it up tonight. And again, with Troy, it's so hard because they have so many players that can put up and have a big, have put up big numbers and have big nights. Every shooter is live. You got it. For Troy. Bowie the basket for the Bobcats on the other end. Should note Johnson now, 21 points, a new season high. Everything going down for Troy. Contested shot, Sandifer puts Troy back on top by 22. Previous high for Johnson was 19 against Missouri. As the Bobcats commit their 24th turnover. Back on the Trojans. Hot hand stays hot for Johnson, 23 now. Really playing well as of late. Last three games for Johnson, 56% shooting on threes tonight. Johnson has hit three more, adding to her Sunbelt leading total. So again, we, we use that term, a live shooter. If Johnson has an off night, go to Leggett, who scores inside there. If she's off, go to Karanga. Bree Harris, Tina Stevens not playing tonight, or Zanatica Downs, they're all capable scorers as well. There isn't a player you say, take her out of rhythm, you can win the game, because Troy has so many options. Yeah, and th they do. It's just the, the style of play, how they're built. And, um, you know, this is a team that's built on offense and then built on um, giving lots of opportunities to score. And, and uh, because of that, you can't really pinpoint one person to stop. You know, Texas State tonight, you know, I think Denasia Hood has had a, a, a really nice game. You know, I think this is the third game in a row in the league that scoring-wise percentage, uh, field goal percentage, she's done a nice job. She's had seven rebounds. And, um, you know, I think that's a good sign for the Bobcats as they go through the Sun Belt play. Hollings inside, 90 on the scoreboard for Troy. You look at the upcoming schedule for the Trojans. They continue this Texas road trip Saturday in Arlington against UTA. They wrap up a three-game road swing of their own in Lafayette this coming Thursday. And then three straight at home for Troy. And I tell you, they come out of this road swing 2-1, 3-0. Now you start to wonder how much longer this win streak can continue. Yeah, and one of the goals, not Coach Rigsby, Rigsby's goal, but their team's goal, her players want to go undefeated. That's their goal this year in Sunbelt play. And this team has earned that right with what they've done in recent years to set such a lofty goal. Troy certainly talented enough to pull that off. 26-point lead right now. Should note that under Coach Rigsby, the Trojans have scored 100 or more 28 times. His left is fouled hard from behind by Dunlap. And that should send Nicole left to the foul line for Texas State. 
Yeah, nice, nice transition offense there by Texas State. I like the way Hood, she's really doing a great job on the board, been outlining to Bowie and um, getting some looks in the break. Don't hear a lot from Nicole Left, sophomore from Cedar Park, but did have an impact in this game last year in the tournament. 11 points, six boards against Troy, and a game that went to overtime. Bobcats were down 17 at the half in that game. Came all the way back and took a brief lead of the fourth quarter. Troy, though, dominant in the extra five minutes on the way to a tournament championship run. Man, the tournament last year was just heartbreak for Bobcat fans. You had the women going into overtime and losing. Same thing happened on the men's side. Um, but there was some really good basketball in Pensacola played by the Sun Belt Conference. Dunlap scores inside again. And you mentioned Texas State's men, and we've talked ad nauseum about the impact the pandemic has had and what's happening right now with college basketball. Texas State's men, both of their games this week canceled because of COVID protocols with the Bobcat program. Three straight games. They've been unable to play. The only one they did, Suzanne, was last Thursday, but were down five players, two of them very key players, starters for Terrence Johnson's team. And so they're out to an 0 1 start and now will have been unable to play three straight before they play their next game. Yeah, and again, that's I think that's going to be the challenge for many of the teams in this league and other leagues across the country is because you can't predict it. You can't. You can do all the things right as a player, um, you know, masking up and, and socially distancing and all those things, but it's just something happens, this variant, and, um, you know, you, you can't do any, you can't, you can't get out of the way of it. Easy cut of the basket inside for Sandifer, 94-66, Trojans on top. Again, Troy picked to win the Sunbelt Conference this season for good reason. Bobcats picked to finish fourth. As a timeout is called by Texas State with 3.12 to go. Yeah, and again, I think Coach Antoine is just right now trying to do some teaching and instructing, getting some, some new folks in there, and uh, how they can learn from this game, take that forward into their next opportunity next weekend. Very early look at the conference standings. Not many games have been played, and again, that number not going to grow by a lot by night's end. Only two games happening tonight. UTA, who Troy plays on Saturday, the Mavericks will go in with a 2-0 Sunday conference record. The Eagles have now suffered a loss. They lost to Costa Carolina earlier tonight, so the shot to clears now move up their 1-1. One one. The Bobcats about to join ULM as the only other two lost team in the Sun Belt. And again, these standings ha have kind of a footnote about them because of COVID protocols. If you can't play 80% of your games, you're automatically seated at the bottom. I imagine if there are any, if that does happen, it will be to more than one team. And so then those teams battle for positioning based on their winning percentage. It's going to be a jumbled mess come March. Well, you could have the entire conference below 80%, so then you're still going back to the the records that the, of the games they've played. And, again, it, it's hard. I mean, I, I think both coaches, when we spoke with them, felt that the conference and their institutions, they were both very appreciative of their administration and the support they've had, the support the conference has had in trying to help, um, you know, mitigate – as best they can and prepare and plan, but you know they understand what we're up against. Final three minutes, and we saw that timeout called by Zenery Antoine, and you said it kind of a teaching moment. Keep this in mind. They don't play again Saturday. Their game against South Alabama canceled, so they won't play again for another week. And so this is an important final three minutes. Play strong. Give the team something to build off of going into next week's game against the Eagles. Absolutely, and also get some of your, your guys some minutes. You know, you see uh, Brooks is out there. You see Raven Adams is out there. A couple of the young players who haven't played a lot, especially in Sunbelt play, and this gives them an opportunity to get out there and get some game time minutes that they may they, they need these guys. Again, with COVID, they may be called up to uh, the starting role in some game during the league play. 
You know, when earlier we talked about how the impact of the role players and how that can lead to success for Texas State when the bench plays well, they typically win games. But tonight the bench has been outscored 27 to 13 outside the big three of Taylor, Hood, and Thompson. Not a whole lot of production. Bowie has scored 11. But this is a team that needs to utilize that depth. Yeah, they do. And, and again, we've talked about they need to find some scores, especially outside of Hood, who's been super, I think, consistent in league play, and Taylor. Um, you know, they've got to find some folks. You know, Lauren Thompson has been in and out of the lineup with some injuries and, and things, and so she hasn't been that force that we saw last year. Issues tonight for Texas State. Turnovers, far too many of them, 26. And they're minus 16 in turnover margin and getting stops specifically in the second half the trojans 54 second half points on 63 percent shooting yeah again lights out from the floor um and several of those shots i know brand i remember you commenting they were contested shots by texas state it's just the trojans um, were able to make them fall tough night at the line for thompson able to hit that one 94-67, Trojans on top. Troy will move to 11-5, 2-0 in Sunbelt play, and they'll pick up their seventh straight win. Again, a win streak that includes an impressive win at Mississippi State, a game that saw the Trojans out-rebound the Bulldogs by 29. And that's just crazy that you have a Power 5 team, a team that was in the Final Four, not decades ago. Just a couple of years yes. ago, Vic Schaefer had them in the national championship game. And, and Troy uh, handled them in Starkville. Yeah, and so it's just amazing um, when the Trojans are on and really at full guns uh, what they're able to do. And you mentioned one of the goals for Troy is to go unbeaten in Sunbelt play. Well, another goal Shanda Rigby mentioned is to not make the NCAA tournament to win in the NCAA tournament. And again, I think that's why a lot of these players, especially the ones that we would call them super seniors, that were seniors last year, they were at Troy, not transfers, that they came back is because they want to have a three-peat, but they also want to have the opportunity to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Coming up on the final minute here in the fourth quarter, Bobcats will fall to six and nine, and this will be the Bobcats' seventh loss in their last eight games. It's been tough. Not every player available during that stretch. A lot of games on the road, playing arguably the best team of the Sun Belt in their first home conference game tonight. Better days lie ahead for this team. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You look at the schedule, just the Sun, Sun Belt schedule. They've had the three games. You've played Louisiana at Louisiana, who was the conference champion. You've played Troy at home, who won the tournament and goes to the NCAA. And so you're playing two of the top three programs in the first three games. Under a minute to go. Will Troy hit 100 again? There's a steal by Sierra Brooks. Rebound saved by Adams into Lord Thompson. With 42 seconds to go. And again, you'll look at the Trojans here. They are they are just going to, you know, use that shot clock, which is not within their DNA, but try to. And, um, and again, get a foul there on Hollins over the back of left. And it's going to give Texas State one more opportunity to put some points on the board. Shot clock now off. Bob Gass could have the final possession here in the fourth quarter. Again, Troy pulling away. In the second half, it was a five-point lead for the Trojans at the break, 40-35. to 35, But they hit the accelerator in the third quarter and pulled away here in the fourth. 96-70, Trojans on top. Bobcats playing for one final shot. It's Hood for a three, and that'll end the game. Final score from San Marcos, 96-73. And the Trojans, Suzanne, have now won seven straight. Yeah, again, they they are a force to be reckoned with in the Sun Belt Conference. You know, they're, they're missing several players. And so when they get fully, fully staffed again, 
um, they could be a tough one. So for Shannon Rigby, career win at Troy number 179. Her Trojans very impressive tonight. Troy 61% shooting in the second half. Five players.